In 2022, League of Legends made $1.8 billion, all from selling you in-game skins. However, despite making all this money off different colored pixels, there are some skins that although they exist, Riot will never sell them to you. This includes skins that were simply created but never made available, and some skins that were available for such a limited time that if you own them today, you are one of few unique lucky players or you're just really old. And in between both of those reasons, there are some skins deemed controversial for one reason or another that led Riot to never making them available ever again. On the other hand, new skins continue to become more and more expensive. If only there was a way to make money from just playing League. That reminds me, today's video is sponsored by Repeat.gg. Repeat is a tournament platform that allows you to make money from playing video games. Seriously, I know that because you're stuck in silver, you thought you could never be paid to play games. But you were wrong. The way it works is you sign up for Repeat.gg and link your Riot account. Next, go to the League of Legends section and join an available tournament that fits your criteria. Now, just climb the tournament leaderboards by performing well in your games. Repeat will automatically keep track of your scores and use your best performances for the tournament. The top players will then be rewarded their prize money. And by the way, you can also join multiple tournaments at the same time. Repeat is a trusted platform owned by PlayStation and they are currently hosting more than $100,000 in regular scheduled free tournaments across all their game titles. So if you want to start earning money for your gaming skills, sign up to repeat.gg with the first link in the description. Getting things started, the disappearance of special free skins. This being Riot Girl Tristana, Unchained Alistar, and Dread Knight Garen. These were interesting skins that Riot gave away to players for completing specific favors around 2014. But today, the methods to obtain them no longer exist. For example, to obtain a Dread Knight Garen, all you had to do was link your Riot account to your Twitter account and simply follow the official League of Legends Twitter account. After that, you would later find the skin in your account. However, this skin is the odd man out of these three. Because although he shared the same gimmick, he has since been made available in the store. He's just not free anymore. The same is not true for the other two though. To obtain Riot Girl Tristana, again, all you had to do was engage with League of Legends on social media. This time, all they ask is you leave a like on their Facebook page. After that, the skin will be made available. This was, for the longest time, the only way to obtain it, but if you missed out, it had since been made available for purchase in the store through special Tristana bundles. But at the current moment, those bundles aren't available, so if you don't currently own it, there is no way of obtaining it. Coincidentally, this is not the only Tristana skin that you can't obtain. In 2012, the files for a skin titled Arm Cannon were discovered, and it featured Tristana with what looks like a Mega Man blaster instead of her regular cannon. Kind of interesting, but at the same time, she looked a bit uh, terrifying. Nothing else ever came to be from these files. The concept, however, maybe became Pulsefire Ezreal. Now lastly, Unchained Alistar was a free skin given to players for simply subscribing to the League of Legends YouTube channel. Speaking of which, only 11% of all viewers are actually- Nah, I'm just kidding. It would appear that this one was a bit more exclusive as there hasn't been opportunities to obtain it since the end of this campaign in 2018. However, much like a lot of the skins we'll mention in this video, these old skins are rare and desirable simply due to their exclusivity. Because aside from that, these are rather bad skins. Sure, Unchained Alistar is owned by an exclusive set of players, but I'd much rather have Moo Cow Alistar. On the other side of things, sometimes some skins go from concepts to full completion and they still don't ever end up in the hands of players for one reason or another. This is SKT T1 Sivir, a complete skin for Sivir having an in-game model, name and splash art that never became obtainable by players. The reason is because it was part of the skins awarded to the winners of the World Championships in 2015. 
However, upon reveal, these skins were met with a very negative reaction. So much that even Riot themselves would later acknowledge that they made a mistake. When the skins hit PBE, the reaction from our players demonstrated that our understanding of what these skins mean and how they should be created was off. Specifically, when it came down to Sivir, reportedly the ADC player Bang did not choose Sivir as his champion. He had selected Kalista. He did play both during the tournament, but it was kind of lame for them to not go with what he had chosen. Doing Sivir instead of Kalista. Wait a minute, like don't the pros get to choose? Isn't that part of the ceremony? So while facing the backlash from the entire skin line not meeting expectations, they went back and adjusted all of the skins. In this process, they used the time to remove SKT T1 Sivir from existence and replaced her with the T1 Kalista that we know today. Additionally, the original set of skins completely ignored Easy Hoon, a player who during that season was the substitute mid laner for Faker. And fine, a lot of teams have substitutes, but they never use them in major tournaments. It happens. But Easy Hoon participated in four games during the tournament and won all of them. In two of them, he didn't even die once. At the very least, he would deserve some sort of recognition as he was part of the winning team. To make matters worse, Easy Hoon had previously spoken on how he didn't feel appreciated because the fans ultimately wanted Faker and not him. In the new set of skins though, Riot made things right and made 6 skins instead of 5, this time including SKT T1 Azir representing Easy Hoon. Overall, a happy ending to a conflicting situation. However, it did indeed result in a Sivir skin that will never see the light of day. While we're on the topic of skins you can't obtain, I have to mention what are technically the rarest skins in the game. These were only available for short periods of time back when you were busy playing the Nintendo Wii instead of worrying about computer games. But we've talked about them in the past, so we won't linger too long. Black Alley Star and Young Rise were only obtainable by pre-ordering the digital and physical collector's edition respectfully. And along for the ride was Silver Kale, who would be yours for simply buying the Collector's Edition at any point. Not today though, because the codes have since been disabled. On a similar concept, just by playing the game before January 2010, you'd have UFO Corky in your account. Which I feel is an actually good skin for releasing during this time. Especially if you compare it to other Corky skins released later. And then if back in 2009, 2010, and 2011 you attended the PAX convention in person, you'd have the opportunity to receive code cards for PAX Twisted Fate, PAX Sivir, and PAX Jax. And then of course, King Ramis was a skin perhaps resembling Bowser, don't tell Nintendo, that was only given to players who played the game during the beta. Now unless you can go back in time, you will likely never own these skins. Unless you buy every skin in the game until the shop tells you there's nothing more to buy. At that point, you can email Riot, tell them you beat the game, and they'll honor your achievement by letting you pick one of these unobtainable skins to be added to your collection. A small token of appreciation for you spending thousands of dollars on their free-to-play game. Alongside these very rare skins, you also have Rusty Blitzcrank. A skin that was removed from the store permanently, simply because it kind of sucked. It released on November 20th, 2009 for 520 RP, pretty much $5. But while some characters were getting skins, dressing them up as Star Wars characters and other pop cultural references, Rusty Blitzcrank was just darker yellow. It didn't take long for Riot to realize that this skin was not up to standards of what a skin should be and it was taken off the store, never to be seen again. Making Rusty Blitzcrank objectively one of the worst skins in the game, but at the same time, one of the most desired skins. But among all these exists a skin so exclusive that no player has ever seen it within the game in any shape or form. That being the Rick Astley Ezreal skin. Who knows why this exists, but back in late 2010, the textures for an Ezreal skin titled Rick Astley were found within the game files. 
Nothing ever came of it, and odds are, it was just developers messing around. But it's a reminder that whether it's Mana Potions, Twisted Tree Line, or the 2010 Rick Astley skin, never forget what Riot Games took from you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.